Okay, you're live. Okay. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure and a delight to be back with you again this morning. This is still extremely weird for me, uh, not having anyone here. Um, I'm wondering if uh, you're hearing me. I'm wondering how I sound, all kinds of things. Uh, it's always lovely when you stand before a group of people. You, you can get feedback. You can look into people's faces and you can understand if you're being heard or uh, received. Anyway, in the name of God and with trust in God, we will go ahead. Now, before we begin, I just want to make a couple of announcements first. I want to pray and hope that you're all well. And I continue to pray for all of you every day. And I just pray to God that you're all safe and that none of you are sick. Um, today, there are some changes. Originally, Robert was going to be with us. Robert is our accompanist, our piano player. Uh, unfortunately, due to some unforeseen circumstances, he is not able to be with us this morning. So for that reason, we will not be singing any of the hymns. However, I will uh, chant some of the parts of the Mass specifically the Sursum Corda, the Lord's Prayer. Um, and I'm so excited to welcome today a musician who will, who will play and sing a hymn for us at Holy Communion time. And his name is Pat Scott. Pat Scott has been a friend of mine since I first came down the shore in 1976. That's how far Pat and I go back. And his wife, Pam, God rest her. I also want to thank him for his willingness to do this. And with God's help, this is not the last time that he will be with us. So at Holy Communion time, uh, Pat will sing and play a hymn, Do This in Remembrance of Me. I think with those introductions made, Pat, by the way, also uh, played at Irene and my wedding a year and a half ago. So he's been to the church before. Pat, welcome. So let us begin. Let us begin in prayer and let's just take a moment, a moment of silence, to bring ourselves into God's presence, to feel God's love around us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's pray together the, the Gloria, our song of praise to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son, 
made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the Acts of the Apostles, Acts 2, 14a, 36-41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucify. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. Give me a moment. Uh, let me find Robin McKeever. Robin, you're on. Robin, 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 can you unmute yourself? I, yeah, there I go. I'm okay. unmuted. Okay. The reading of our psalm today is Psalm 116, 1 through 3, and 10 through 17. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangle me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaiden. You have freed me from my bounds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving in a call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O oh Jerusalem. Alleluia. <clears throat> a reading from the first letter of Peter <clears throat> if you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds live in reverent fear during the time of your exile you know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. <clears throat> he was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, 
through the living and enduring word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He said to them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as, he were, as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us, that same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, everyone, <clears throat> I'm going to take a risk here, and I'm going to try something. I'm going to try some humor. And it's very difficult, because I'm not going to get any reaction. I'm not going to be able to see where whether you you believe what I'm saying is in the least bit humorous. But here goes. These are groaners, by the way. Two blood cells fell in love, but it was all in vain. Get it? And then I know that this I know that this one is cheesy, but you'll always have a pizza in my heart. And finally, there's so much room in my heart for you. Now I'm actually talking about hearts here. The word heart is used four times in the readings today. 
word heart, we always connect with love. And that's a connection that goes back thousands and thousands of years, even to the, the ancient Greeks. The idea of the heart being connected to love. <clears throat> the idea, and it's a pretty prevalent idea, that the heart somehow is the source of love. It's where love resides, as it were. And of course, that's a very difficult thing to prove or to illustrate. The only kind of illustration we have is, for example, when we fall in love and we come into the presence of the beloved, we hear, our hearts may flutter, our pulse rate may increase as we come into the presence of our beloved. But actually, the scientists tell us that love is more of a function of the brain. It's what happens in the brain that produces this elusive feeling of love because even the best research of scientists hasn't been able to locate well, where exactly is love? How can love be turned on and turned off? And I'm saying the feeling that I have today is that we are being asked in these scriptures before us to think about our hearts and how our hearts move us toward love, how we think about that movement, that movement toward love. The description in the Acts of the Apostles, when Peter preaches, and he preaches repentance, and the message gets through, the people who heard him said, the people, when they heard him, they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart. And as a result of that feeling, they were moved to repent. They reacted and said to Peter and the disciples, brothers, what should we do? There was movement. And they wanted to know what to do. In the reading of the gospel, that beautiful story of the road to Emmaus. And Jesus appearing to the apostles afterwards. And their efforts to describe what happened to them. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road while he was opening the scriptures to us. Were not our hearts burning? So there are two very vivid descriptions of heart reactions. One describes a burning in the heart. The other describes the heart being cut, being cut to the heart. These particular scenarios give us a feeling that there's something, a, some reaction in our hearts over which we have no control. We react. Disciples were cut to the heart. Their hearts were burning within them because of the events that were occurring around them. So are we subject then? Are we simply subject to movements within our hearts that occur without us necessarily intending them to occur? 
I want to put before you a combination today, a combination of brain and heart, a combination of recognizing a heart movement and bringing the brain to bear upon it. Listen to what Jesus said in the gospel. He said to them, how foolish you are and slow of heart. Slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. We want to bring our hearts to bear upon our belief and our faith in Jesus Christ. We know from experience that love as we experience it, for example, as teenagers falling in love, and through experience we learn that that initial feeling that initial feeling of when the person walks into the room, our hearts start to beat. But that doesn't necessarily go on forever. And that there comes a time when we can't rely on those simple reactions of the heart anymore. In our love relationship, we begin to rely upon our conviction our faith in the person, our trust in the person that gives us such a sense of security and being loved, which extends beyond any emotions, any external emotions that we feel. Our love is internal and secure and strong. How foolish you are and how slow of heart. If the heart is the source of love, if that's where love emanates from, then I put it to you today that the heart is the source of our desire. Our desire for the object of our love. Our desire for God. So that desire expresses a love that is not simply subject to the whims of the moment, but it's strong, it's convicted, it's there, it's trustworthy, it's strong, it's a desire, it's how I feel internally at the source and the core of who I am, my desire for God is an expression of my love for God. And I think that's the challenge that Jesus put, puts before the disciples. Slow of heart. The heart is not energized. The heart is not desiring God. And that desire overcomes so many things. There's a great a great quote from the letter to the Hebrews. And it says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels unawares. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels unawares. In our reaching out, which is a very deliberate action, it's a deliberate action inspired by a desire to love others in the name of God, a desire to express my love for God in the way that I treat other people. And that extends beyond all fickle emotions of the moment. 
But the rewards that are described here, in having that desire, in making that conscious, deliberate, intentional effort to show hospitality to strangers, I meet an angel. The apostles had the same experience on the road to Emmaus. They entertained Jesus Christ by showing hospitality because they invited him to stay with them. And in showing that hospitality, they came to realize that without knowing it, they were entertaining their Lord and Savior. And that same principle works for you and for me that when we express our desire to love God by reaching out, by extending ourselves, we meet our Lord and Savior in those that we meet. Those people on the day of Pentecost when Peter was preaching, when they said to him, what must we do? What should we do, they asked. Look at the song. There's another expression there of that notion of wanting to do something, a desire coming from inside of us, from the core of our being, a desire springing from our love of God. In verse 10 of Psalm 116, how shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? Now you and I know, we know it very well, we can't repay God. I have nothing in terms of my physical possessions that I can offer to God in repayment for all the good things that he has done for me. But I can offer him my heart. I can offer God my heart. I offer God who I am. That other amazing quote from Jesus in the gospel where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's a very logical, thought out statement. That's not a statement that depends on how I'm feeling from one moment to the next. That expresses a desire. A movement on my part, a movement on my part toward God. Because God is my treasure. God is my treasure. And where my treasure is, there will my heart be also. And this discussion is significant given the situation that we find ourselves in at the moment. Because there's a part of us that during this time of separation and lockdown, that we can feel very useless. We can feel useless. We can feel hopeless. But if we are able to be in touch with our inner desire, our inner desire for God, we see opportunities. We see opportunities even within our own families. Opportunities to express that love that we feel so deeply. And to come into a situation where we begin to feel the presence of God. That we don't feel defeated. That we don't feel hopeless. On the contrary, that we feel optimistic. 
and we feel hopeful and we feel energized by knowing that there's nothing in this world, nothing in this world that can separate us from the love of Christ. The love of Christ surrounds us at all times. And our heart knows that love. Our heart instinctually recognizes that love. And we begin to see when we motivate that desire within us, we begin to see that even those that we are living with, are the presence of Christ in our midst. We can have that experience that the apostles spoke about. Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road when he was opening the scriptures to us? You can still feel that desire, that burning in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis that is upon our lives. The desire is within us. The love is within us. Our hearts are open. Amen. So let's pray now in faith, an opportunity for us to express our love of God, the love of God that rises up in our hearts in a desire to express it. We believe one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> now, for the prayers of the people, when we pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Dear friends, in this Easter season, as we celebrate Jesus' victory over death and mayhem, we face fearful times. But even now, God brings us new life through the risen Jesus and promises that this is who we truly are. Jesus came that we might have life and have it to the full. Let us then put our trust in the power of God's love and ask for all that we need. We pray for the whole human race. May the world emerge from this pandemic crisis with a new commitment to justice, peace, and global solidarity. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living and loving God, use your people to bring joy to those who are hopeless, to bring riches to those who are poor, and to bring healing to those who are sick. 
especially those we named before you. Gary Holahan, Sandy Sandback, Randy Bates, Lou Cook, Catherine Charles, Stephen Spano. Are there others? God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living and loving God, reassure your church of your ongoing guidance during these days of pandemic. Strengthen our faith to bridge the gaps created by necessary separation. May our faith in the risen Christ and our reaching out to others foster kindness and compassion in our neighborhoods. Make us one in the living Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. The most reverend Michael Lewis, Archbishop. In the New Jersey diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the members and ministry of the Environmental Com Commission. And in St. James Church, we pray for Irene Sakiris and Austin Murray, for Jose and Victoria Nagtalun. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all affected by the global coronavirus crisis, those who have died and their grieving families, those who are fighting for their lives, those whose age and impaired health put them at risk. May your spirit of mercy bring them comfort. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Na we pray for national leaders and their advisors making difficult decisions. Frontline healthcare workers to directly exposed to the virus. Those maintaining essential services for us. May your spirit of service inspire them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have lost their jobs, homes, and livelihoods people with serious mental health issues, those at increased risk of domestic violence. May your spirit of love give them strength. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all whose gifts, sacrifices, and service are raising our spirits and giving us hope in this time of trial. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those recently deceased, especially Jim Gray, Antoinette Marino, and for those who have died from the coronavirus. Are there others? May God in your mercy hear our prayer. Living and loving God, because of Easter, we can live in hope. Open our eyes to see how, in the risen Christ, the power of death has been defeated. Everything has changed and life is transformed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bill, you're on. Bill, you're on. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, Marilyn. There you go. There you go. It's peace. Peace. peace be with you all. Peace. Peace, peace everyone. everyone. So good to see everybody. Peace. Good to see you. Stay with you. All right, let us let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you father almighty creator of heaven and earth but chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son jesus christ our lord for he is the true pastor lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body and one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us in everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
this my surrender and my sorrow. This is who I am and who you can be. Take this, all of you. This blood is shed for you, my family. Do this with your lives. Do this from your table. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. Take this, all of you. This is my body, which will nourish you. Food when you're far from your homeland. This is who I am and who you can be. Take this, all of you. This is my covenant of constant love. Do this with your lives. Do this from your table. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. All of you, this is my body, which will rise again. This is my life, my resurrection. This is who I am and who you can be. Take this, all of you. This cup will call us to the kingdom. Do this with your lives. Do this from your table. Do this in memory of me. Do this in memory of me. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> Our doing this in memory of the Lord Jesus Christ is an expression of a desire that comes from our hearts. Our desire for oneness and unity with God, that we may be one with one another and one with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray in thanksgiving. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. My friends, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hi, Doris. Hi, Doris. Hey, Doris. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi, Robin. All Hi. right. Hi. I don't know if he's still on, but thank you, Pat Scott, for lovely music today. Great. Yes. yes. Thank you, Pat. You're very welcome. Thank you. Okay. Peace, it was great. Peace. Have a peaceful day. Thank you very much. You too. Good to see everyone. Good to see yeah. you too. Oh yeah, good to see you. Hello. Hello. Bye. Hey, Marilyn. Bye. Bye. Bye, Robin. Bye. 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 See you next Bye. week. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yep. Yeah, we'll Bye. see you next Bye. week. Bye. See you next week. Bye. 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 All right. Justin. Bye. Bye.